Thank you for your purchase of a Woodmiser LT15 wide sawmill. Before you begin assembling your LT15, make sure no damage was done in shipment or that you are not missing any components. It will come as shown packaged on a wooden pallet. Remove all of the plastic wrapping from around the shipment. You may need to use a knife or sturdy scissors to cut an opening in the wrap. The next step should be to cut the straps that hold the bed sections and head in place during travel. There should be a total of three. Two on the bed sections and one around the mast. These can be cut using a box knife or sturdy scissors. Always make sure you are wearing proper eye protection when you cut these bands. They will be under pressure and will jump when cut. With the straps cut, you need to lift the head of the mill up to its highest point. Do this by cutting the strap holding the handle locked in place. Make sure the handle locks into position before continuing. While on the back side of the mill, locate and remove the crank handle bracket and shipping plate. You can do this with a 9 16 inch wrench. Set the crank handle aside. Just below the crank handle, locate and remove the push bar also using a 9 16 inch wrench. Using the same bolts that originally held the crank handle bracket into place, remount the bracket to its original position, ensuring that the push bar also mounts with it in this position. On the opposite side of the head mass assembly, remove the bolt holding the head into place, also using a 9 16 inch wrench. Squeeze the now released lever and rotate the crank clockwise to raise the head up all the way. You can now remove the four bolts and shipping brackets, holding the head assembly to the pallet. Make sure you remove both bolts and brackets from each side of the head mast assembly. At this time, remove all the boxes and bags containing the mill hardware and blade. Set these aside for later use. Also, while in that area, remove the track wiper. On the other side of the bed rails, remove the clamps from the shipping location. First, loosen the bolts securing the clamps in place. Cut any existing zip ties and pull the clamp free from the bed rail. Repeat this process for the second clamp. Set these aside for later use. The next step is to remove the complete head and mast assembly from the pallet. First, lower the head back down which gets the center of gravity of the head assembly as low as possible. The required weight capacity of the equipment to lift this is 800 pounds minimum. This can be done with a forklift, hoist, or crane. Slowly start lifting the head. If it is not balanced, then lower and reposition the to make sure it is properly balanced. Once the head is lifted high enough to clear the bed section, Move it to a safe location until the bed assembly has been completed. With the head and mast assembly out of the way, you can now remove the gas tank from its shipping position on the pallet. Remove the bolt securing the gas tank and mounting plate to the pallet. The gas tank can now be set aside for later use. Now it's time to assemble the bed. Remove the two bolts that are holding the first bed section into place. There is one on either end of the bed section. Be careful, the bed section will drop several inches as soon as these bolts are removed. Each bed section weighs about 160 pounds. With two people, lift the bed section and place on a flat surface. Repeat the process for the second bed sections. Remove the bolts, lift the bed section, and place on a flat surface. Before the third bed rail can be taken off the pallet, first, remove the last bolt of each of the remaining securing brackets. Set these aside. Next, locate and remove the four bolts that secure the last bed section to the pallet. Lastly, with assistance, lift the bed section and set on a flat surface. The three bed sections can be placed in any order as long as their side supports are located on the same side. Before attaching the beds together, install the leveling legs. Notice the 7 8 hex nut goes on first 
and is positioned about midway down the threaded part of the leg. Once this is on, insert the leg into the bracket that is welded to the bed frame. Then install the 7 8 inch square nut to the top part of the leg. Screw the square nut as far down as possible. Then to tighten, twist the leveling leg until the nut becomes secure. The shape will prevent it from spinning inside the bracket and will tighten the leveling leg. Once you have the first one completed, continue and install the rest of the leveling legs. Readjustment may be required once the mill is completely assembled and set up in the desired sawing location. The bed should be approximately level for ease of operation and each leveling leg should be supporting bed weight. Next, pull the two bed sections together. Make sure the alignment pins go inside the tubes. Insert a 1 half 13 by 4 inch hex head bolt into the holes in the two round cross members. These will use a 1 half 13 nylock hex nut. The bolts go on each side of both main bed rails. It takes two 3 quarter inch wrenches to tighten these four bolts. Once you put two bed sections together, repeat the process and add the third bed rail. Next, install the main rail coupler. First, make sure the rails are tight against each other. If not, loosen one of the rails so that it will slide. Loosening the eight bolts that hold the rails onto the main tube will allow this adjustment to be made. Then install the connecting coupler using two 3 8 13 by 1 inch hex head bolts. Gently tap the coupler using a rubber mallet to start into the holes provided. Tighten the hex head bolts evenly until snug. If rail was loosened, re-tighten those eight bolts at this time. Your LT15 widehead sawmill has a rail on each side of the bed. Make sure to repeat this process for the opposite rail. Once both rails have been completed, we can move on to the head mast assembly. Next, install the head assembly onto the bed assembly. Lift and align the head assembly over the bed. The four locking pins will need to be pulled out to let the head assembly down against the main bed rails. There are two pins on each side of the head mast assembly. Next, install the track scrapers to each end of the head assembly by using 3 8 16 by 1 inch hex head bolts and flat washers. As you tighten with a 9 16 inch wrench, make sure each scraper is firmly against the rail. This will help prevent sawdust from building up on the rail and bed tube. There are a total of four wipers to install. Before installing the track wiper, remove the 3 8 13 by 1 inch hex head bolts and flat washers from the inside of the head assembly. When you're ready to install the wiper, pour some Dextron 3 ATF transmission fluid onto the felt part of the wiper. This will keep the rail clean and lubricated. This will be held in place by using two 3 8 13 by 1 inch hex head bolts and flat washers. Repeat this process for the second track wiper, which is located on the opposite rail. During our next step, make sure to install the rope brackets on the side of the mill, which also has the side supports. Next, install the two rope brackets using the 1 half 13 by 2 and a quarter inch hex head bolt with flat washer and 1 half 13 nylock nut. Ensure that your 1 inch spacer is placed between the rope brackets and the mounting plate, as shown. You will notice that the fingers on the bracket are tilted back so that it will hold the knot in the rope. Tie a knot at one end of the rope. Hook that knot into the bracket, then start routing the rope through the mast. Make sure you go over the top of the pin and around the inside groove of the lower idler roller closest to the bed rail. Bring it up to the crank handle pulley, go over the top, and loop around two times toward the feed handle. Next, go down the outside groove of the lower idle roller. Then back through the mast, once again making sure you are over the top of the retaining pin. Pull the remaining rope back to the rear of the mill. 
tie a knot in the rope and put it into the rope bracket. If the rope is too loose, the feed handle will slip. To tighten, remove and retie the knot closer to the saw head. Now we can place the log clamps back onto the sawmill. Make sure they are between two cross sections that have no side support present. Using the same bolts that held the clamps while shipping, place the clamps into the pre-drilled holes. Tighten the bolts on the clamp, ensuring that the clamp rests against the sawmill as shown. Repeat this process for the remaining clamp. Now hook up the battery cables to the appropriate battery post. The red terminal should be connected to the positive post of the battery and the black connected to the negative post of the battery. Once connected, reinstall the battery cover and secure with the strap provided. If your mill comes with the power feed option, please hook in the wires at this time. Before installing the mounted gas tank, remove the two bolts, nuts, and washers from the pre-drilled mounting holes on the head mast assembly. Take the gas tank that was set aside earlier and mount it to the inside of the head mast assembly using the same bolt, nut, and washers. Tighten these bolts to secure the gas tank to the head mast assembly. Once the gas tank has been properly mounted, cut the straps holding the water and gas tubes to the head of the sawmill. Take the clear water tube and push it onto the spout of the white water container. Take the two black tubes and lead them to the gas tank. The smaller or thinner tube goes onto the spout with the smaller diameter. The larger of the tubes goes onto the spout with the larger diameter. Loosen the metal fastener on the fuel tube and slide it over the area where the spout enters the tube. Retighten and fasten to ensure the fuel tube is tight and does not slip off of the spout. There is one fastener per tube. When installing the blade, always make sure to wear gloves and safety glasses. Open the two blade wheel covers and insert the blade. Make sure the blade is on the outside of the two blade wheels and under both blade guides. Once the blade is in position, tension the blade by rotating the blade tension handle counterclockwise until it is locked into position. Ensure that the end of the alignment bracket is aligned with the washer. If not, untension the blade, rotate the bolt slightly, and retension the blade. Repeat this process until the alignment is achieved. Lastly, remove the sawdust guide from its packaging position and using the same bolts and nuts, reattach it facing in the opposite direction so that the sawdust is guided toward the floor. Congratulations, you have now completed the assembly of your LT15 sawmill. If you have any further questions, refer to your manual or review this DVD again. If you have any questions not answered by either of these, please feel free to call our customer service department for assistance.